Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? Hi everybody, it's Jeff. Raining here again today in Maine, as I said before yesterday, uh, last video. Um, <laughs> we get a few days of good weather and then we're going to get a few days of rain. <laughs> um, but uh, Christ, uh, what was it, early this morning, about 3.30, 4 o'clock this morning, there was two people out in the parking lot and they were just hollering at each other. And I was like, what the hell? I mean, it, you know, it just woke me up because, you know, I had the window open. And, uh, you know, it gets pretty quiet around here at night. And so even if a person's kind of whispering, you're going to hear it. But these people aren't whispering. I mean, they were just going at it. You know, this guy and this girl here outside. And they were just, I, I could pick out some of it. Something to do with Facebook. Something to do about uh, a, a girl or something. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it seemed to me like maybe uh, whoever is, was using Facebook, you know, uh, was flirting around with another girl or something online I don't know I mean that's about all I could get out of it because you know uh, it, it's not uh, always clear to hear you know I don't have any sound device to pick up you know but Jesus so I haul out the window take it inside <laughs> you know and uh, you know I just all of a sudden you know I, I hear doors close and everything and then it just kind of stopped so I was like you know Jesus you know you know, people coming home late at night, you know, if you got disagreements and stuff, you know, come on, have some courtesy. You know, people have their windows open during the summer, okay, uh, and sound carries around here when there isn't a whole lot of other sound going on, okay. Um, you know, people ought to be smarter about that, you know, because, hey, some people wouldn't be, wouldn't give a warning at first. They would just call the damn cops right off the bat, okay, you know, so... <laughs> I don't know, that's, people are weird. So, uh, again, the Republicans are kind of falling apart here. Uh, their, their unity has been damaged because now they're attacking each other over how they should attack Harris. <laughs> okay? Um, and the, the, the word that, that's being heard a lot today is, is it's not a word, it's just, you know, D-E-I. Okay? And uh, let me let me uh, get to this um, article here from the Hill, the Hill, by Miranda Nazaro, uh, and it's entitled "Frost Calls Out GOP for Racist Dog Whistles About Harris." Okay, and how else are they going to attack her anyway? I mean, when they've got nothing intellectual to say about Harris, they're always going to resort to the goddamn racist and misogynistic side of things, right? Representative Maxwell Frost, a Democrat from Florida, on Tuesday lambasted GOP claims that Vice President Harris is in her role because she's a quote-unquote DEI hire, unquote, saying that is a cover-up for a racial slur and among, uh, quote, racist dog whistles, unquote, being used against her. Quote, whenever you hear DEI, I want you to think about the N-word. I want you to think think about racial slurs that's what they actually mean unquote frost said during a cnn interview on tuesday cnn anchor uh jim acosta uh, then asked frost if representative tim burchett republican from tennessee 
who called Harris a, quote, DEI hire, unquote, a day earlier, referring to diversity, equity, and inclusion, that's what DEI stands for, was being racist when he made that remark. Quote, I have a good relationship with the congressman. I think sometimes, though, he does use rhetoric that is racist. And whether people know it's racist or not, I'm here to tell them that it is racist. And I hope they won't use that rhetoric anymore, unquote, Frost responded. Burchett on Monday weighed in on Biden's withdrawal from the race and endorsement of Harris, writing on X, quote, The incompetency level is at an all-time high in Washington. The media propped up this... Uh, president lied to the American people for three years and then dumped him for our DEI vice president, unquote. <laughs> uh, Harris quickly received widespread support from scores of Democrats and secured enough delegate endorsements for the Democrat presidential nomination just one day after her presidential campaign officially launched. Quote, they want to call her a DEI president, a DEI candidate. She has more experience than former President Trump and J.D. Vance combined, times a million, right? Unquote, Frost added. Quote, she, she won at the state level. She was the Attorney General. She was Vice President of the United States. She was a Senator representing one of the largest states in the entire country. And so these are just racist dog whistles, unquote. In an earlier interview with CNN on Monday, Burchett took issue with Biden's vice presidential selection process and its result. He argued Trump would now perform better with Harris at the top of the Democrat ticket. Really? Quote, Biden said he's going to fire, a, he's going to hire a black female for vice president, unquote. Burchett said, quote, what about white females? What about any other group, unquote? When you go down that route, you take mediocrity and that's uh, what they've what they have right now as a vice president, unquote. Well, we'll find that out pretty damn quick, won't we? <laughs> Burchett was then asked directly if he believes Harris was in her job uh, because of DEI, to which he said, quote, 100% she was a DEI hire, unquote. When asked about Frost's comment, a spokesperson for Burchett said the congressman is, quote, using President Biden's own words, unquote. <laughs> Uh, like I said, this you know they're going to resort to racist attacks. Uh, I, I think that's been a given. I mean, we know what Republicans are, okay. Uh, but you know that's that argument's not going to work. If they if they do, if they hound on this too damn long, they're going to turn off more voters. They're going to walk away from Trump, okay, uh, and more people will line up to vote uh, independent or, or Democrat, okay, uh, you know, people get sick of that. You know, it's bad enough to hear it coming out of Trump's mouth, but when all the other Republicans start talking like Trump, you know, pff, come on, do you really think that's going to, that's really, that's only going to energize the base they already have, which is MAGA. They're the only ones that's going to listen to that and, you know, shake, uh, uh, you know, and agree with it. Okay, anybody else with a, an ounce of brain in between their ears is going to get turned off by that kind of shit. So they do this at their own peril. Okay, and to think, and, and if they think that Harris is an easy, uh, an easy win, <laughs> prosecutor versus felon on the debate stage, who do you think is going to win that fucking argument? Okay, give me a break. Harris is going to mop the floor with Trump. Because Trump doesn't have any facts. He speaks in lies and metaphors and, and bullshit. I mean, that's why he's so fat. Because <laughs> he's filled with bullshit. You know, this guy doesn't do anything smart. Okay? He's got no brains. He's actually using the fucking MAGA people to get himself in there. He's already said that he, he loves un, uh, uh, the poorly educated. He insults his own goddamn base and they clap and applaud him for it. You know? <laughs> This is, this is who they got. I mean, Jesus Christ. And, you know, they, they thought it was an easy win to go up against Biden, but Trump lost. Okay? 
and they couldn't stand the fact that he lost. So they, for four years, they were hounding on the fact, oh, he cheated, he cheated. You know, what are they going to do when they lose against Harris? Are they going to play that same old tune again there for another four years? I mean, come on. They couldn't prove it the last time. They'll never prove it, you know, this time either if, if, if Kamala wins this thing. Uh, and right now, with, the, with their MAGA movement, unsure about where they should go to, to attack Harris because, hey, they look at her resume, they don't see a dummy. They don't see someone that's got skeletons in her closet. Okay, they see someone who's respected by her family, okay, has uh, stepchildren and stuff like that that she takes care of. She's, you know, uh, and, you know, she's very, very much uh, into helping people to, to, to better their lives, especially for the middle class and the poor. I mean, she knows, okay, what's going on around her. I mean, she's not in this just for the rich, <laughs> all right? Uh, where you can't even say any of the same, you know, for for Trump and the others. I mean, they are the rich running for the White House. You know, Trump is the the epitome of what MAGA says they hate in this country. He is what they hate, but they love him. You know, I I don't understand how they how they justify. You know, we say we don't want the establishment. The establishment, the establishment, my friends, is the wealthy. Okay who have done some damage here to the Democrat Party already. But it's the wealthy that's the establishment. And what does the what does MAGA do? They reach into the establishment to pull out some fucking guy that ain't got any fucking morals, doesn't have any principles, talks about screwing his own daughter, okay, every chance he gets. You know, talks about the the great the the late great Hannibal Lecter like he's a real person. <laughs> Okay, talks about water pressure and toilets, you know, at rallies. I mean, this guy's a fucking loon, you know. The, you know, MAGA is going to expect more out of Trump now because they're afraid of Kamala. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna want to see a better Trump than what they got. They're gonna want to see something other than JD Vance, essentially, because Vance isn't gonna cut the mustard. Okay, he ain't gonna be the the, the fucking guy that's gonna. Uh, bring uh, the ticket to a higher level, all right? The Democrats, you know, they they brought forward someone who's going to give Trump a nightmare when if they ever have a debate. And they know this because they can't see any way to attack her except on her, you know, her race, you know? <laughs> uh, and, you know, like I said, it's, it's really a no-brainer. You know, it was before... With just Joe Biden, it still is now. You don't want Trump, or you don't want anyone from MAGA winning this this seat. You don't, because their agenda isn't even their agenda. It's the Heritage Foundation's agenda. They're the ones that's going to be dictating, you know, what America will be uh, formed into. Okay, that's their fucking plan, and the MAGA is just adopting it. And, uh, you know, they're not even too proud to even talk too much about it whenever, they, you know, and, and like I said, there's so much in it, you know, 190 pages that, you know, a lot of the stuff that's in there, you know, might even uh, give uh, MAGA pause to fucking think, you know, about maybe we shouldn't vote for him. They're, they're not really going to say anything about it. I mean, the only thing they keep harping on is the abortion issue because they know that that's, that's what solidifies their party. But when they start talking about other things... You know, uh, and let's just take, for example, MAGA's hatred uh, of our government. They don't want a big government, right? Well, what makes government big? Okay, think about that. What makes government big? It, it gets big because of money. And the last thing MAGA wants, they don't like to pay their taxes. They don't want to do this and that. What happens when Donald Trump gets in there and he and he expects people who make less than twenty five thousand to start paying taxes every year? You know, he basically he's telling Maggie, "Look, you're going to be paying more taxes when I come in here as president because I'm going to reduce them for the upper one percent who who could pay their taxes, but I'm going to lower it for them, but I'm going to increase it on you." And they're like, "Ooh!" At the same time, they're they're talking on the other side of the mouth saying, well, "We don't want big government." You know, do you see what I'm what I'm saying? I mean, these people they live 
in a world of mirrors. I mean, they just, they don't fucking understand a damn thing about how, how the country works. They don't want to pay taxes, yet they vote for somebody who's going, to, who's going to raise taxes on them to pay for the tax reduction that he's going to give the rich. You know, if only, you know, Republicans would just think and just do a little goddamn research on their own. You realize that you know they how much more how much smarter they would be at this point. You know, <laughs> I mean, God, they I don't think a, a single one of them probably ever cracked open a book when they were in school, and they just they just uh, slid through school, you know, you know, because they don't have it. They don't have any intelligence. They don't have any critical thinking skills. These people got their diplomas at a raffle. I mean, they they don't understand a goddamn thing. You know, you can't take away from one side in the tax arena, okay, and not expect it to get on the other. I mean, because the government depends on the money it gets to operate all the offices and stuff that we have that keep this country going, which Trump wants to get rid of, okay? I mean, the Supreme Court has already opened the door to that, thanks to them, the Fox, okay? So, look, if he's going to close down all these offices, like the EPA and you know, FDA and all that stuff. If he's going to shut down all these offices in government, how is he going to justify raising taxes, uh, you know, on the rich? I mean, on the, not on the rich, but on the poor to maintain offices that no longer exist, right? I mean, obviously he's talking about cutting down the offices so that way he can give the rich tax breaks, Right? But then he's going to turn around and raise it on the other end. What for? If you shut down these offices, then, you know, if you reduce taxes on them, it should be reduced on the others, right? Because the government as a whole won't need as much money because you shut down half the fucking government, right? So why do you think he wants to raise it on the other side after he de decreases it on the other, on the top end? You see what I'm saying? If he's going to close down offices in the, in Washington, then there won't be a need to raise taxes on the other end of this thing, right? They got to think about that. What's he really saying in that project 2025? What's 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 his goddamn scheme here? And what's he going to do? Take the surplus and pocket that, you know? Who's going to get that extra money that the the that the middle class and the lower class are going to have to pay? You know? Who's going to get that money? Somebody's going to get it, right? It ain't just going to sit there in a bank somewhere. That money's going to go somewhere. Because if Trump gets in there and he starts shutting down offices, then that means the government won't need as much money to operate, which is what MAGA wants. They want, they want a small government so they can flush it down the toilet. That's what they want. You know? So where is that extra money going to go that he's going to, you know, get from... The poor that are going to have to pay more when they don't really have to, <laughs> you know, you know, it's just think about that, but they don't because they're in their minds. Anything Trump says, you can take it to the bank. They believe everything he says, even though he's full of bullshit, they're still going to believe it. Even though he's a criminal and a rapist and all these other things, they're still going to believe him. Okay. And their minds right now, if Jeffrey Dahmer, or let's just say, uh, you know, uh, Ted Bundy, because he was into politics, he was a Republican, right? If Ted Bundy ran for president, they wouldn't care that he killed all these women. No. If he's talking the way Trump's talking, hey, Ted Bundy can be president too. He can be sitting on death row running the country. You know, they don't care. This is the logic that you're getting from MAGA. They don't care. You know? The next time they talk about the party of law and order, you should laugh your fucking heads off. Because everything about them has been just the opposite. They tried to fucking do a coup in this country to stop a president from getting his uh, rightful place in Washington. You know, what the hell? How many, how many hip hypocritical moments here are we going to have to point out to people, you know, in the rest of the time we got to election, to convince peop uh, MAGA... That you guys are out of your fucking minds. 
You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, what, how many more times are we going to have to do this? Just to get today, saw a fucking vehicle on the road full of Trump bumper stickers and all. You know, I feel sorry for them. They probably don't even know how to gas up their car. That's how stupid they are. All right. The fact that they would be uh, able to do anything or have money to buy a car to put bumper stickers on. That's amazing because, you know, they're Trump supporters. They can't be that smart. And I'm, and I'm not saying this lightly because, you know, I, I know somebody who doesn't do a very good job at taking care of anything. When one of their cars breaks down, they go and they buy some other shit, shit box somewhere to keep, you know, and they drive it. They got a car full of fuck. They got a yard full of cars that break down and they don't fix it. And they just keep buying more junk cars, you know, and they're, and they're MAGA, they're, they're MAGA supporters. That's what I'm talking about, okay? That's what I'm talking about. These are people who live life on the edge all the fucking time, okay? And they wonder why life is so difficult for them because they never think ahead. They don't plan for anything. They just, they just wake up and they start their day and they, you know, stumble, trip and fall and they do stupid things because they don't, they don't plan. They don't... They don't are not aware of what's going on around them, okay? Uh, and how these people live their life that way, I just don't know. I really don't know. But that's MAGA. That's fucking MAGA for you right there. These people, I mean, I'm not saying they're all, there's, there's some smart people in there, but if they're smart and they're MAGA, then they're in it for some, some other uh, reason. Something that's not American, Okay? Because anyone with brains that's in MAGA, they're in there to do something crooked. Everybody else is in there because they're too stupid to realize they're in, they're in a party that's they're going to get had <laughs> again, just like they did the last time. They're going to they're going to get taken to the cleaners. All right, let's go to a commercial break. We'll be back. <laughs> This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis. I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins. I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. Proud to be promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. It's my favorite book. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody. Donald Trump found guilty all 34 counts of falsifying business records. Donald Trump's hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. She had an affair with Trump. I am the chosen one. The Trump Organization frauded the state of New York. $354 million. I'm very greedy. We must make America pray again. How stupid are the people of the country to believe this crap? Donald Trump found guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first You're degree. a criminal, Donald. That's what the jury said. Not the deep state. Not the Democrats. Not the Biden administration. A jury. Regular people who saw the evidence and felt sick. You're a criminal. 
And you did it to yourself. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. It's, uh, it's a shame. Your defense was weak because you were weak. They had no argument because there is no argument. You were too scared to testify because you knew Donald. You know. You're guilty. Guilty as sin. Guilty as charged. for President Donald J. Trump and J.D. Vance. Terrible candidate, idiot if you voted for him, might be America's Hitler, might be a cynical a-hole, cultural heroine, noxious and reprehensible. God, I can't stomach Trump. I think that he's noxious and is leading the white working class to a very dark place. He's leading our political discourse to a very negative place. If Trump is elected president, he has to be a much different president than he was a candidate. It's a candidate he was fundamentally divisive, arrogant. I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. Entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I love the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th, and St. John November 20th through the 26th. There's another article here from the Huffington Post, um, and I want to read that, and it's by Igor Bobic, <clears throat> entitled, New 2024 Race Kicks Off with Racial and Gender Attacks Against Kamala Harris. Uh, it took less than 24 hours since she all but walked up the Democratic presidential nomination for Republicans to start bringing up Vice President Kamala Harris's race and gender a signal of how potentially nasty the last four months of the 2024 race against Donald Trump is shaping up to be. Upon returning to Washington this week from recess, several House Republicans quickly dismissed Harris, the first woman, black person, and person of South Asian descent to serve as vice president as a, quote, DEI hire, unquote a pejorative term conservatives have used to refer to programs that promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. Unsurprisingly, the attack has often been launched against minorities, including the mayor of Baltimore earlier this year. So they use that in the form, so they don't have to say the N-word, so they just call it. <laughs> uh, quote, 100% she was a DEI hire. Unquote. Representative Tim Burchett of uh, Tennessee, Republican, told CNN on Monday of Harris, uh, adding, quote, when you go down that route, you get mediocrity, unquote. 
Boy. Uh, when several of his colleagues echoed Burchett's uh, House Speaker, Mike Johnson, Republican from Louisiana, urged his conference to focus on their policy differences and the vice president's record, quote, her ethnicity and her gender have nothing to do with this whatsoever, unquote, Johnson said at a press conference on Tuesday. But Representative Harriet ha Hagman, a Republican from Wyoming, didn't appear to get that message, calling Harris a former district attorney, attorney general, and senator, uh, quote, intellectually just really kind of the bottom of the barrel, unquote. Really? <laughs> An attorney general and a senator? Okay, and she's calling that the bottom of the barrel? Ain't that kind of like when Trump was talking about black jobs or something? I mean, you know, and everybody's like, what does he mean by, you know? Boy, I mean, talk about a person that's uh, intellectually at the bottom of the barrel. This is from uh, Harriet Hagman here. Jesus. Quote, I think she was a DEI hire, and I think that that's what we're seeing, and I just don't think that they have anybody else, unquote, Hagman told Gray TV's Josh Rotenberg. Uh, President Biden dropped out of the race over the weekend and endorsed Harris, passing the torch to younger standard bearer to the relief of many Democrats who worried about his uh, fitness and ability to beat Trump in November. Uh, at the time, Biden was considering a group of diverse potential running mates, including Washington Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, uh, Harris, and three other black women after vowing during the campaign to pick a woman uh, as his vice president. That pledge was separate from his vow to specifically appoint a black woman to the Supreme Court, which he did l l later. The president ultimately chose Harris for several reasons, according to an August 2020 report from the New York Times, including, quote, her ability to help Mr. Biden win in November, her strength as a debater, her qualifications for governing, and the racial diversity she would bring to the ticket, unquote. Harris, as the likely Democratic nominee, may be facing similar considerations. Already her vice presidential shortlist includes at least seven prominent Democratic rising stars with strong resumes who also happen to be white men. Still, it's often only people of color who face such attacks over their background, as one Republican lawmaker acknowledged on Tuesday, Capitol Hill. Quote, of course, it's not appropriate for heaven's sake. Unquote, Senator Lisa Murkowski, Republican from Alaska, told Huff Huffington Post about the, quote, DEI hire, unquote, attack. Quote, what are they just going to say? If you're not a white male, it's a DEI candidate, unquote. Uh, I'm sorry, no, Senator added. Senator... Uh, Raphael Warnock, Democrat from Georgia, who is one of only four black senators in the upper chamber, also slammed the GOP attacks on Harris. Quote, here is a woman who is an accomplished lawyer, an attorney general, an incredible prosecutor, United States senator, vice president for the last four years, and they're talking about DEI hire, unquote. <laughs> uh, quote, that's beneath the rhetoric the American people deserve at this time, and it hasn't taken 48 hours for them to show us who they are. Unquote, Warnock added. Harris isn't the first presidential candidate to face racist attacks, of course. Former President Barack Obama, the first black president, and his wife Michelle were forced to contend with a racist ba uh, backlash for much of his presidency, including the insidious and false birther conspiracy theory fueled by conservatives and Trump, its most prominent peddler. What may be different this time is the gendered attacks being hurled at Harris at the same time. Some on the right have gone after her for having no biological children, even though she has two stepchildren uh, with her husband. Second uh, gentleman, Doug Emhoff. Uh, other MAGA commentators have suggested that it's somehow not manly to vote for Harris. <laughs> well, that's a reason not to vote. Okay, quote, this is the kind of we cry for help, misogynist shitstorms that is coming. Be ready, unquote. Senator Chris Murphy, Democrat from Connecticut, wrote in response on X, formerly known as Twitter. Democratic lawmakers aren't the only ones bracing for an ugly campaign. After Harris met with civil rights activist Al Sharpton on Sunday, according to the Times, he told her, quote, you cannot get ready for a price fight. This is a street fight, unquote. 
to which Harris replied, quote, I'm prepared for that, unquote. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, this is what they're doing. Right off, right, right off the bat, right out of the gate. Let's, let's go racist, let's go misogynistic, okay? You know, they basically saying, screw her fucking credits, screw her resume. She's bottom of the barrel, right? You know, like every fucking, I mean, she's, she outclasses most of the fucking Republican senators that are there now, okay? And yet they're going to say she's, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. I mean, they're insulting themselves while they're trying to insult her, okay? The thing of it is, is that they don't know what to do. And the Republicans are not all behind this kind of attack. They want to see something smart because they know they're going to go up against something smart, okay, from here on out. They're going to go up against someone who who's mind is sharp okay and that it's not going to ramble uh onto stupid things you know like uh like you know toilets and water pressure and and Hannibal Lecter they're not going to want that they're going to want to see Trump be able to out outdo Harris how many of you out there really think that's possible Trump can't even outdo himself <laughs> okay he's he started off, when he, before he became president, talking like this, all right? And because the Democrats were so ensconced in their own petty bullshit, he managed to win on the crap that he was telling people at his rallies, okay? That's how bad it was. You know, and that's what I was afraid it was, is, it was happening here with the Democrats, that they were going to repeat 2016 here, okay? Um, the only difference is, is they seem to have fixed the problem before the convention and not during the convention, okay? Because the convention divided the whole party uh, when people showed up there and they got, and most of these half the people got fucked out of what they wanted. That's what made it bad. This time they had to, they had to do this correction here uh, before the fact. But the thing is, is that Trump was out there doing the same kind of shtick that he's doing now. And nobody was really picking up on that because they were, you know, the, especially the Democrats. The MAGAs loved it, okay? They love anything he says. But the Democrats weren't really paying attention that, that much to them. They were pissed off and angry about what was going on in their own party. Okay, so now he's running again, okay? He's running again now after he lost, uh, you know, for his second term, he lost. Now he's running again. And he's doing the same thing all over again. But this time, I think people are listening. This time, the Democrats are listening more to him. And thanks to the media, they keep bringing him out there and in front of people's faces every day at the rallies and showing what he says. Okay, uh, there's even people out there who have been recording some of his rallies and picking them apart piece by piece to show MAGAs, you know, you guys are fucking nuts. Listen to what he's telling you, you know, and they show it. And explain what he just said, if they can. <laughs> but, you know, and they compare that, what he's saying, to Project 2025 and seeing how that connects. He ain't up there talking for himself. He's up there peddling the Heritage Foundation's manifesto. That's what he's talking about whenever he starts talking about things like, you know, uh, border issues and stuff like that uh, and, and uh, abortion and stuff. He don't give two shits about abortion, believe me, okay? Uh, he ain't got a religious bone in his body to even get, even have the right to talk about abortion, whether he's for it or against it, all right? <laughs> okay, he's not, he's not that kind of guy. But if, if he's going to get help from this group of people, he's going to say what they want him to say, you know, if he can remember to say it. Which, you know, right now, they're going to be sweating because... Trump's delivery of Project 2025 and stuff like that is, is like, you know, most people in MAGA don't even know what the hell that is. Can you believe that? That, that you know, that, that a lot of people in MAGA, you talk Project 2025, it, it, they, they, you say, well, go to the Heritage Foundation and look it up. It's right there in big, bold fucking print, okay? 190 pages of it. Read it. Now, too much work, you know? 
it's all about their own goddamn party, they still ain't going to do it. <laughs> you know, they're not going to do it. They talk about being patriot. If you're a patriot, then you're going to read that fucking thing. Okay? If you're a patriot, then you'd read that son of a bitch in uh, manifesto, and you'd know what was in it. But a lot of these people, they're just brushing it off, and they don't even know what the hell's really in it. They didn't read the whole thing, if they even read it at all. Okay? They probably just got the little advertisements or something, you know, about what's glossing over what's in it. But it, they always pick the good stuff out of it that they think the manga wants to read. But the rest of it, they're going to keep that, you know, and hope they won't read it. So, like I said, do what they don't want you to do. Read the goddamn thing. That's the last thing they want you to do is read that thing. And, and they were mad at the Heritage Foundation to even put that out on their fucking website. So, like I said, it's, it's sad that, you know, we have the, the, the MAGA party, okay, being misled the way they are. Um, they think they're smart. That's how bad it is that they've been misled. They, they think they're on the right and everybody else is all against them, you know, because they're, they're evil and whatever the hell kind of fucking shit they want to come up. That's what they're doing. All right. And because they're so far down that rabbit hole, we can't, we can't get them out. So what we got to do is bury them in their own hole <laughs> and move on with, with uh, keeping our country safe and prosperous and strong and hopeful okay let the magas go bury their head in the sand if that's what they want okay but don't give them the chance to make what they want to see happen happen because because what their their reasons for wanting to see trump as president are not even reasons that are realistic because they're being misled fox is telling them what to believe fox is doing it because they got an agenda okay Trump is telling them all kinds of things that they, they like, but Trump's not in it for them. Okay, these people are being habitually used. No wonder they feel like the government's against them. Okay, because they keep siding with the wrong people all the time. You know, they're always at the wrong side of history. If they would stop that, <laughs> you know, and start listening to the other side, they might be making some better choices from now on, and they might see America in a much better light. You know, the problems that MAGA has right now in America is the same issues the Democrats are dealing with and, and fighting for. But they don't, they don't, they ain't making that connection. They think that their ideas or their needs are loftier and uh, better than what Democrats want. But, you know, if you bring the two together and you ask them what difficulties are you having, they're going to find their own, they got common ground and they don't even know it. And the, and the funny thing is, is that one side can prove that the side that they're on has tried and, and success, successfully done some things to help, okay, while the other side has meddled in the uh, success of trying to get some things done and keeping the country, you know, at a place where the MAGAs don't like it, you know, and it's all because the Republicans have, you know, traditionally always been for the rich. That MAGA doesn't see that. They don't think that. They think it's the Democrats who are always for the rich, you know. <laughs> I don't know how many ways they could say it, you know. If anything, you know, Bernie Sanders would be a better choice for them than, than Donald Trump because, <laughs> you know, Bernie Sanders is always talking about helping out the, the middle and the lower class, right, in this country. Higher wages and stuff. That's what MAGA wants, too. That's what MAGA wants, too. They want better wages. They want better spending power. But they don't think that, uh, you know, the other side is, has a history of helping them get that, you know, because they're too blinded. By the fact that oh they're they don't want to ban abortion oh they they have black people you know trying to elevate the black race and oh you know they're you know what I'm saying it's that right there that keeps them from seeing reality is that racism they don't want to look beyond that they can't they just can't they are unable to see pe uh, people as equals all right that's why they stick with MAGA and that's why the Republicans are always out there pushing the racist agenda but to keep the MAGA people together which is what they're doing right now using Harris okay as the the reason okay 
Harris brings back the racist argument, which is going to coalesce the Republicans back around MAGA. Scare the shit out of them. Make them think that Harris is the devil, you know, that she's incompetent, that it's a woman, that she's going to bring back, you know, uh, abortions or something, or she's going to, you know what I'm saying? They're going to scare the living shit out of, out of the MAGA voter base because it's Harris now, not, Trump, uh, not Biden, okay? And, uh, but I'll tell you, when the debate happens, if it happens, between Trump and Harris, uh, it's, it's going to blow up in their face, but they won't admit it. They won't fucking admit it. They'll walk away saying, oh, Trump did great, okay? Even though the people that watched it at home probably have a sick, will get a sick feeling in their stomach that they lost. They'll, they'll run to Fox News to have their spirits lifted because they'll spin them in a nice little rosy picture of how, you know, of trying to turn a failure into a success. Because Trump can't do it. <laughs> He's not going to be able to, def uh, to beat uh, Harris at a debate. Not now. Not this time. It ain't gonna be like the last debate, okay? He's gonna have a he's gonna have a hell of a time. And and Harris is not one that'll that'll back down, okay? She's got a lot more fire in her and energy than Trump ever ever has, okay? Trump's he's seventy eight years old. What the fuck do you think he's gonna be able to do, okay? The best he can do is lie. That's all he can do. If he ain't if he ain't armed with facts or something like that. And all he can do is attack her for, you know, for being a prosecutor, which is is not a, really an attack. I mean, if I was a prosecutor, I would think that would be an honorable thing in my resume. But in there, instead, they're going to spin that into a negative, right? <laughs> okay. The thing of it is, is that, you know, they can't, they're not going to be able to win this thing against her. Okay. They can't. They're in such disarray right now. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. They're, they're, they're eating each other right now over that. And it's it's fun because they've been they've been fucking attacking us all summer here. Uh, so, you know, since the, the race began, they've been at us and at us and nitpicking and everything, you know, going after Hunter Biden for 16 months, you know, trying to get him in trouble. They've been they're wasting all kinds of time kind of putting off the idea that, you know, that there's a possibility they may not win the election. They think they had it, had it in a bag. And that's why they've been screwing around, you know, in Congress and doing all this other bullshit that they shouldn't have been wasting their time doing. Now, it's crunch time, and they ain't prepared. They're not prepared. They took for granted that the, the Democrats were, you know, were going to just run the president again, okay? But the fact is, is their own debate that they had that they were saying, all right, we beat him. We're gonna... that, was the, that was the thing that... Uh, that changed the whole narrative, okay? And now they kind of, in a way, created this reality uh, with this, uh, you know, the switch. If it wasn't for, for, for the debate, you know, that they insisted on having be this way and that way, if it wasn't for that, you know, who knows how this would have shook, uh, shook down. But the thing of it is, is now that now they got uh, Harris to deal with, which is... Uh, and Nero, I think they hate Harris more than they did Biden, to be honest. I really do. I think they, you know, Harris was, you know, because they attacked her a lot when she ran for vice president with Biden. They didn't like her then, you know, and they still, they still don't like her. They, you know, and especially now that she's running for the actual office of the presidency, they're going to hate her and they're going to slam her in every which way they can. She says, bring it on. You know, I don't care. Because she knows how to get back at them, and it's going to be, you know, Trump. Trump is their weakness. Trump, he's the weak spot to the MAGA movement. Okay, they think he's the strong, he's the strong point. No, he's not. He's actually the weak point. Because he can really bring down the whole fucking, uh, the whole game for, the, for MAGA. Just by being an idiot on the stage when, during a debate, which he will be. Okay, um, and so... That's going to be, I think, uh, a big blow to the MAGA's uh, ego, if you want to call it that. Their morale is going to really get hit hard uh, if they should ever have a debate. Which is why I think, you know, Trump, you know, if he's smart, he won't fucking debate her. He'll stay the hell away from her. You know, the poll numbers won't go down as much that way. 
if he avoids the, the debate than if he has the debate. And then, you know, it, it would really go down. It would really go down hard. And Fox wouldn't, well, you know, would have to come out of there like a fucking horse and, and try to recoup some of that momentum that he lost. You know, so it's, it's, it's really now it's up in the air where uh, they thought they had it, you know, but because they thought that the Democrats were all committed behind Biden, you know, it, it, we, we don't nominate until the convention, okay? That's how we do things. You know, Biden wasn't nominated. It was just a given because he was an incumbent, you know, he's president already that he'd be the one. But no, it, you know, they didn't have any rule that says they have to put the president in there, like take away our choice to decide for ourselves who we want to run. No. Okay. Yeah, we were all behind Biden and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, things shook down the way they did. And now it's, it's, it's uh, Harris, but it's not... It's not like against any rules. We can change, nom you know, a person who's running uh, for the nomination uh, before the convention. You know, it's not, it's not fucking, it's not set in stone until then. So that's how we do it. All right. So um, that's it for today. And I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. So subscribe, comment, and share. And keep your ears open for health-related matters. And treat each other kindly out there. Uh, and uh, just uh, try to enjoy the, with, uh, the rest of the summer. I'll talk to you again later.